things that we often hear on Easter Sunday morning. We hear that the, the tomb is empty, and we hear that Jesus gave himself willingly on a cruel Roman cross, and all of those things are true. But what I'm struck by this morning is what he provided for, for you and for me. And it's, it's more than freedom, although thank God for freedom. It's more than heaven when this life is over, but thank God that I don't have to live in a Christless eternity. Not because I'm all that in a bag of chips, not because I am so wonderful, but because Jesus died for me. But there's something else that He has made available to all believers that I, I think a lot of Christians don't stop and consider. There's a verse of Scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome, And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. In our world today, when you think about power, you think about might, and when you think about position, it, it seems like so many are fighting their way through life so that they can be first. So many are, are, are doing what they think they need to do so that they look a certain way to certain people. Jesus, the one who knew no sin, the very Son of God. Can you imagine on that cross when He cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The first time He ever experienced a disconnect between his heaven, He and His heavenly Father. And He suffered and He died a horrible death for you and for me. And it wasn't so that He could amass power. It was so that He could give power. Amen. Overcoming power to His children. Power to live free. Power to live above sin. Power to thrive in a world that is increasingly hostile to things of God. There's another place in Scripture where, again, the Apostle Paul speaks of this power, that power that raised Jesus from the dead in the book of Ephesians. I love the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is, is one of the prison epistles. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. Written in Paul's imprisonment in Rome that we read about the very beginning of in the very last chapter of the book of Acts. And while he was in prison, he sat around and said, oh, what a shame. I feel so bad for me. I'm in prison. No, he didn't. He wrote he wrote inspired letters that we still have today to Christians all over the known world at that time. And the book of Ephesians, at the very first chapter, he very quickly points out the privileges and position that all believers in Christ have. Not because they're so good, not because they didn't do certain things or did other things, but because of what Jesus made available. He prays for the Christians in Ephesus, as he's writing from Rome, he prays three things in chapter 1. The first thing that he prays for, he asks God to give them spiritual wisdom and insight. Then he prays that their eyes would be opened and that their hearts would be illuminated. So he's praying for their continuing growth. He's praying for their continuing experience. And he says, I want you to understand the hope of your calling. Wow, we live in a hopeless world. We live in a world where people are trying to do things on their own, and they're looking for hope, and, and they're, they're spending an awful lot of money and effort and time trying to, to buy hope, trying to put hope into containers that were never meant to contain hope. But Jesus is our only hope, and He's reminding these young Christians, understand the hope of your calling in Christ. And then He prays a third thing, and I want to read these verses to you in Ephesians 1, verses 19 and 20. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power 
that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. This speaks in detail of what Christ accomplished for us when he defeated death on the cross. The, the provision that he made that we could have a life that we could experience his power. What does that mean? The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. That's some pretty substantial power, wouldn't you say? Amen. Uh, I, I don't know how many times you've ever uh, seen someone who was crucified, had a spear in his side, and, and all of the blood drained from him that on the third day rose from the dead. And when he rose, it wasn't just an ordinary body. It was a glorified body. Because he could be touched. He still bore the prince of his crucifixion. But yet he ate. But he was able to just simply appear in a room. A, a, a body that we don't understand. And what power is it that made that possible? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. What is the power that God has given to all born again believers? The power of the Holy Spirit. God himself loved you so much that he's not just letting you squeak by on this earth and somehow make it to heaven if you're lucky. I swear some people who go to the church every week are convinced that they're just holding on and hoping that maybe God will let them in. And they're, they're missing the power. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. God has invested himself in the person of the Holy Spirit to live in you. And as you are willing to let him, he will take more and more control of your life. Let's all be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Let's all let him do in us what he wants to do. Oh, let's not talk about saying some prayer and hanging on till heaven, please. Please, can we get beyond that? Can we just not say, well, it's Easter, I guess I should go to church? No, no. Can we understand that Jesus died to forgive us, to make us new creations, and to invest that heavenly power in us? Yes. Amen. And it's not because we're worth it. <laughs> it's not because we've earned it. I'm telling you something, if you're going to live for Jesus, you're going to face trials. You're going to face temptation. You're going to face some battles because we live in a fallen world. But we do not have to be overcome by the struggle. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. Amen. He has made us and remade us to be overcomers. Not just someday, by and by, in the sky, when I die, but now. Amen. Here and now. Amen. God's love is so immense for us that he invested himself in us. Isn't that incredible? Yes. And it's all for his honor and glory. A little bit later on in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, we read that Jesus has raised us up to be seated with him in heavenly places. Yes. What does that mean? Well, it speaks of Jesus being raised in heavenly places. How can we be raised to sit with him in heavenly places while we're still walking on this earth? Here's what it is. It's the perspective that you have. You can view what you're going through here from a heavenly perspective when you are seated with Him in heavenly places. And I'm sorry to disappoint you if you think that means heaven when you die. It starts now. Yes. We can walk on this earth and be seated with Him in heavenly places. When you look at what's going on around us, from heaven's perspective, it looks different. When you look at what's going around us from heaven's perspective, then you don't walk through each day, set day, saying, poor me, look at all that I have to be burdened with. There is victory in Jesus. Yes. And that's exactly the way that he intends for us to live. There's more. There's more. There's always more. There's always more to experience as you walk with Jesus. And my prayer for you this morning, whether you're here in this room, whether you're watching by live stream, is that this Easter you purpose in your heart to discover the more. Guess what? You will never fully comprehend it until you see Him face to face. Amen. Jesus told His disciples and He tells us in this world 
you will have trouble. But then he said, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. And my prayer for you is that you get a hold of what it really means to follow Jesus. If you've never given Jesus your heart and life and never made a decision to follow him, well then there's a whole lot more for you to experience. Amen. It's, it's a life of freedom. It's a life that is not free from pain, but it's free from the guilt and the consequences of sin. It, it's a life when you live and you lay your head on the pillow at night and you can say, thank you, Lord, for carrying me through another day. Thank you, Lord, for making me stronger today than I was yesterday. Thank you, Lord, for being able to see the good and the potential and not be so downcast and just worried about the bad. We live in a very interesting time in our history, and I'm, those of you who are regulars here, you know I say this a lot. There's a lot of things that I say a lot, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> it seems like in our world today, there's, it's almost like there's two churches. There's one group that go to the building with pews and a steeple, or maybe not, and they're meeting this morning, and all they can do is see that, well, there's really no hope anymore. What are you going to do? Oh, what a depressing thing to hear. What are you going to do? But there's another church that is energized yeah. <laughs> and psyched and, and saying, what can we do? <laughs> Look at all that God has made available for us. Look at the potential that there is in this world to lead others to a saving knowledge of Jesus. And I think as we look back in history, uh, I have no idea how long we have here. Christ could come at any moment. And I'm like, let's go, right? I'm ready. But until he comes, there's nothing in the word of God that says quit. Nothing. Nothing. I can't wait to see the opportunities and the challenges that God places before us Amen. as we walk forward. I believe as we look back, we will be able to see that 2020 kind of changed things, mm -hmm. didn't it? Mm -hmm. We got to a point where we were so afraid of dying, we forgot how to live. And, and that found its way into the church, and the church is supposed to be different from that. I'm not talking about masks or mandates, or I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about a giving up. I'm talking about many churches today, and they don't bear any particular denominational title, where its members are so convinced that the world is too far gone, that they might as well just give up and wait for the rapture. That's not the church that Jesus died and rose again to empower. Yes. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available for all of you today. 